Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to a new video. So in this one then, I've got a day one strategy to go through with you. I made it myself and the way I designed this then is to essentially take you from having nothing, i.e. on day one, all the way to having a fully functioning Shopify store with some winning products, running some profitable Facebook ad sets as well. I have exported this strategy into a PDF. So if you do wanna get your own copy and use for your own reference, you can do so. It won't cost you any money. Just simply check out the first link in the video description down below. Before we jump into it then, one final Final thing I just want to quickly say is that I do read every single comment so if there is something you want to ask me then simply leave your comment down below I will see it I will read it and I will answer it um, if you enjoyed the video make sure you let me know just simply hit that like button and finally I do upload four videos every single week so for regular and consistent content please do make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel that being said thanks again for tuning in I hope you enjoy it and let's get straight into it so the start budget then for this strategy is 500 pounds. This will allow us to get the required and necessary Shopify apps, pay for the required plan, and obviously do all the testing we need to on Facebook and the scaling as well. Remember, you also need some funds left over to consider the order fulfillment. The faster we can fulfill our orders, then the better because the faster our customers will receive their products. So to start from the very beginning then, you need a Shopify plan, which is gonna cost you $29. Now for the sake of ease, I'm just gonna do everything in pounds. Being in the UK myself, um, it's just easier to do this. Shopify won't let you sell either until you sign up to a paid plan so this is a expense that you can't avoid essentially in terms of the apps I recommend there's four kind of um, apps in which I strongly recommend that you need and that you get if you want to add any others on top of this then that's completely up to you number one is Obelo it is 100% necessary to create the link and integration between AliExpress and Shopify. Number two is an upsell app. This is gonna cost you about 20 pounds per month depending on which one you use. So a lot of people always ask me then whether having an upsell app is necessary and there's only one answer to this question and that is yes. To illustrate how powerful this is then, I read a study, it was going a while back now so I can't truly remember the specific numbers, but it was, I think it was in America in the Southwest region, all the branches there adopted the method of asking their customers a simple question. All they would simply say to them is, would you like fries with that? And simply by offering that as an upsell, so that's what an upsell is, is when somebody buys something, you simply ask them if they would like to increase the size of their order or buy something else as well. And by doing this, then the branches in that particular region were able to increase their sales by an extra, I think it was $120 million, simply by asking a question. It doesn't cost them anything to get their staff to ask that question and they were to make that considerable gain in sales so make sure you have an upsell app basically Point number three or app number three then is Looks Reviews. Just to quickly mention, I'm not affiliated with any of these apps by the way, so these truly are my genuine recommendations. Looks Reviews, in my opinion, is the best kind of review app because of the layout and the reviews you can integrate from AliExpress. Um, just head over to the Shopify app store, check it out, see what you think, and it's gonna cost you about 10 pounds per month. In my opinion, it's an absolute must have, and we'll be getting into why later on in the video. The fourth and final one then is a free shipping bar. Because one of the biggest reasons why people abandon checkout is because they have to pay an additional fee for shipping. So we're going to include free shipping with all of our products and we're going to advertise the fact to all of our customers too because then that's one less worry or one less reason why they might leave our store without making a without making a purchase. So that brings our total spend so far to £89. In terms of the theme then, I want you guys to use, I want you to use the debut theme. It's 100% free. You can get it from Shopify themselves. It won't cost you any money. And to give you an example then of a debut theme, store um, here is the very first Shopify store I created now it's not currently live but I do keep it live um, for YouTube reasons so I can refer people to it just to kind of use as an illustration of essentially what a good store looks like I won't get into it now because I've documented this in numerous previous videos but using this store this exact product page I was able to generate over a hundred thousand pound in sales so I know that this strategy or this method or this setup and layout actually works to kind of summarize what I, what I want you to adopt then in your product pages is these bullet points here so number one is a white background now one thing I will say is that simple often works best so keep it simple use a white background high quality images neutral easy to read font you want clearly bullet pointed features and benefits just so all the information is right there and then and the customer can naturally progress through the information and consume it all um, pretty easily essentially it's easy on the eye easy to read easy to consume 
You want short to the point product descriptions that essentially present a problem to the customer and then solve the problem by buying that particular product. You want a standout add to cart button. If we go to this page here, you can see the only other blue thing on the page is this free shipping bar. And both of these are kind of like a benefit. They've got free shipping and then naturally that eye is gonna kind of track towards the add to cart button, which is essentially what we want. Trust me, it can make a big difference. Um, te split test in different colors of your add to cart button. You want trust badges and you want reviews. Now, why do you want these final points? Here's a quick little study I wanna share with you. When shopping online, which of the following features of an online store makes you trust it to most? This was a survey that this particular company did. And the number one thing then was customer reviews. They are a must on your store. Think about it. If you go into, if you go on a website that you've never heard of before, you've never seen before, and they've got absolutely zero reviews on all of their products, you're gonna be pretty skeptical about handing over your credit card details details or spending money with them. So the kind of number one thing I want you guys to consider is that when you're building your store, you need to make it come across as trustworthy. Additional things then that every site should have. Now I need to mention these because some of the sites I review um, don't have these pages, they leave them off. Number one is an about us page, you need that information on there. Number two is an FAQ page for obvious reasons. Number three is the legal policies. So your refund policy, delivery policy, terms and conditions, privacy policy, policies. You need your contact information on there. You you need an email and you need a phone and address if you can. Now I've covered these in previous videos on how you produce those for your customers without revealing your personal phone and personal address. There are ways to do that. So make sure you check out my previous videos. But basically the more information you can give to your customer, um, the more trustworthy you're gonna come across. And then finally, you need a track my order page and you, a blog, I guess, is optional. But what I find the benefits of a blog here is that if you can give value to your customers, i.e., so if you're running a dog shop and one of your blog posts could be certain training techniques for your dog, then it gives people a reason to keep coming back to your store, to follow you on your different social media pages, and therefore they'll be consuming your content more and more, and therefore they're more likely to become a customer and be a returning customer too. The final point then when it comes to your Shopify store is to get feedback on it. Now when I say get feedback, don't show your mother. You need to get honest feedback. That should say get honest feedback. In fact, I'm going to put in there. So go into Facebook groups, ask the admin if you can post for feedback. Um, you can join my Facebook group. I allow people to post their store links in there. And we've got a pretty great bunch of people, in fact, that give you genuine, honest um, feedback. So the reason being is because it doesn't matter. You could be selling bars of gold for half um, the weight of it or half the cost of what it should be. But if your store isn't trustworthy, then nobody's gonna buy them even though it's a great deal. You need a good and trustworthy looking store, otherwise nobody's gonna buy your product regardless of what it is. That being said, then moving on to the products. So we need to have in total 30 minimum on your store. This is to give an impression of a well-established, legit, and again, trustworthy business. Next point, they don't all have to be winning products. Just make sure you don't add a load of rubbish because if you have a ton of just crappy, plasticky, rubbish products on your store, it will devalue your store. It will make customers think that your company, your business is cheap and not worth spending their money with. Have high quality products, but they don't all necessarily have to be winners, those golden products. The strategy then I want you guys to adopt is I want you to choose three products to test. Number one is I want you to pick a product based on your gut feeling. The reason for this then is because picking products is a skill and by choosing products that you go with on your gut feeling, if they work or if they don't work, you're gonna soon learn by trial and error and develop that skill. Number two is I want you to choose a trending product because this gives you a good chance of success. Number three is tried and tested, so i.e. a product that you know is selling successfully. How do you find these products then? Number one um, in terms of your gut feeling products so the numbers correspond with each other you can use all the different product research tools in the world these are just um, a few of the popular ones you've got thieve.co you've got ecom hunt you've got cj dropshipping aliexpress and of course facebook number two then to find trending products and google trends is the place to be in my opinion it doesn't matter what product you add to your store you should always check it on google trends because the information it gives you for free as well is just invaluable number three then to find tried and tested stores the best place hands down is the x exchange marketplace. Again, I will be illustrating all three of these in a second. The exchange marketplace is essentially where people go to sell their Shopify stores. You can see how much they've turned over. You can see what their best selling products are. Again, I'll be showing you this in a second. So as an example then, so if this was me adopting this strategy, number one then is this spaceship nightlight. The reason being is when I first saw this, I thought that's a pretty cool product. And my gut feeling tells me that when other people see this product, they will think the same thing as well. Number two then in terms of Google, um, sorry, in terms of trending products, we've got gym leggings up here. 
here. So this is just an example. And this is just an example then of a good product. If I show you this in real terms, so this is Google Trends. Essentially, you put your search term up there. So that would be your product. You can choose your country. You can choose the timeline. And then you can see the actual interest over time. And what you're looking for then is a product that's as close as possible to 100. If you see, if I scroll across, you get different ratings. So that's 53. And essentially, what that's telling you then is how popular that current search term is. So you can see that Jim Leggins at the point at right now is the most popular it has ever been in the past 16 years. The other important information that Google Trends gives you is the interest by region too. So essentially you can see what countries are currently searching for this search term. So essentially you know which countries to target when it comes to Facebook ads. If we go back to the strategy then, the third and final product is one that we know is selling very well right now. So again, to illustrate this, this is a store that I found on the exchange marketplace. It's called Amp Mobile. And if we go down to the sales history, we can see these guys have done nearly two million dollars in revenue now what we want to do then is if we head over to the actual website we can use the Shopify inspect um, Chrome extension we can go straight to their best selling products which is this amp station if we click on it or take it to their product page now we know that this store has done nearly two million dollars in revenue and this is their one of their best selling products so we know that this is a winning product essentially and that is going to be the third product that i want you guys to kind of base this strategy on and actually use and implement so that being said we have our shopify store we have our products now for the most important part then of pretty much any business which is the marketing now what i want you guys to do then is watch this strategy all the way through and then go back and re-watch it because there's a lot to cover it might get confusing at points so if it does make sure you leave a question down below like i said i will answer it but trust me i've used this strategy time and time again and it never fails to work so where you start then is essentially from um, the very beginning is we're going to have one CBO campaign, one ad set per product and one creative per product. So essentially we've got a CBO campaign and then within that campaign we're going to have three ad sets, um, one ad set per product and we're also going to have one creative per product. The conversion objective will be for you content because if we go after purchase our reach is going to be lower therefore we're not going to get as much data back therefore we're not going to be able to make as good a judgment um, of which essentially which product is performing best. When it comes to finding products that are working i.e. so when you're testing them then the more data you can get back then the better because then the more accurate decision you can actually make. We're going to target one country because it's the beginning we want to kind of keep things relatively narrow we don't want to bite off more than we can chew just yet we want to go for all ages and genders that way essentially we can see where the data is coming from as well the detail tags and options i want you guys to use then are online shopping narrowed by engaged shoppers so to show you how you would set this up in real terms here is an example ad set that we are creating so in here we're going to put online shopping and that's going to target everybody who has shown an interest in online shopping if i can spell it correctly let's just go back online shopping and then the next thing we want to do is narrow audience and we want to go for engaged shoppers and essentially what that means is it's going to be anybody who has clicked the shop now button um, engage shoppers it's going to be anybody who's clicked the shop now button which is obviously a good sign it's people who are interested in buying a particular product now you can see the potential reach is quite broad but this isn't a problem at the moment because we are just testing then essentially we want to try and get as much cheap data back as possible and by going broad this is our best chance of doing so in terms of the placements then, so again, just to show you how to set this up, we're going to go for Instagram and Facebook newsfeed only. So if we just scroll down, we want to edit the placements and then just remove absolutely everything. So as you can see now then, all I've got left selected is the Facebook newsfeed and the Instagram newsfeed. The reason being then is when we're testing, we want to make sure that we get the truest data back as possible. And by, by selecting newsfeed, then we, we can pretty much guarantee this because the newsfeed section is going to be the biggest section on anybody's desktop, on anybody's mobile phone. That way, we can pretty much guarantee we've got a true impression and somebody has actually genuinely seen and registered our ad. The runtime then for this initial CBO campaign is going to be three days and the budget is going to be £30 per day. So essentially that brings our total spend up to now at £179. Now the reason this is our starting point then is because we're testing three different products in one CBO campaign and by putting it in the CBO campaign it allows Facebook to tell us essentially which product is performing the best and that's the products that we're going to roll with. So the next steps then are essentially what we're going to do now is create two new creatives for the best performing 
product. So from this initial CBO campaign after three days, switch it off, look at the data and see which one performed best. Performance is based on the cheapest data accumulated and the most budget spent. So because it is a CBO campaign, what Facebook will tend to do is put the majority of your budget into the best performing one. And whichever one that is then, I want you to then go ahead and create two new creatives around that one specific product. Once you've done that then, what I want you to do is to create a brand new CBO campaign. And in this time, we're gonna have three ad sets within this campaign and each ad set is going to have its unique creative but essentially each creative is going to be for the same product and the tags and the placements then are going to be exactly the same as the previous so as it says there the same as the above the run time again it's going to be three days at 30 pounds per day which brings our total spend now up to 269 pounds now the reason being for this then is because essentially to begin with we've tested three different products to find out which the best one is now what we want to find out is the best creative for that product because essentially the more money we can funnel down on what works so doubling down on what actually works the better chance we have of being the most profitable and therefore the most successful so after you've ran this for the three days and you've tested the different creative our next steps are to now test the audiences to do this we're going to start a brand new cbo campaign we're going to have three ad sets within that campaign but we're gonna take the creative that performed the best from this CBO campaign, and we're gonna use the same creative for each ad set then. The target and placements are gonna be exactly the same as above, except we're going to change the detail targeting for each ad set. We're gonna have three different audiences, one at an audience size of 500,000 people, one at an audience size of a million, and one at an audience size of 1.5 million. So essentially what we're doing here is we've got the best performing product, we've got the best performing creative, now we need to find the best performing audience to essentially move into scaling. So create the CBO campaign, let it run for another three days at 30 pound per day, and that will bring our total spend up to 359 pounds. By now as well, you should be seeing some sales. So while 359 pounds may sound like a a lot um, at this point you should have seen some sales by now so you should be starting to recoup some of that cost our next steps then after these three days are now to focus on the best performing audience ie the ad set that performed the best from this cbo campaign and start to absolutely go crazy with the scaling now the reason of why this works and i like to explain absolutely everything i do um, number one is we are testing absolutely everything the more you test the more or the better chance you're gonna have for finding essentially what works. So we're testing different products, we're testing different creatives, and we're testing different audiences. And they are the three kind of key features to any successful Facebook campaign. So we essentially, as it says there, finding the best of everything to then focus on and scale. Now, I was gonna include the CBO scaling strategy for this video, but I've just realized I've been talking for like 20 minutes now, so I'm gonna include it in a different video. Let's say if we can get this video to 100 likes and I'll release part two, which will be the CBO scaling strategy that follows on from this that being said then guys that pretty much just covers everything so one final thing i want to say is thank you very much for watching if there's anything you're not clear on by the way as i've mentioned a couple of times already just make sure you comment your questions below um, i will answer them for you and then a couple of final things just to um, before you leave number one is check out my free ebooks there's five different ones there's a link for each one um, in the video description below if you want more content on shopify and facebook ads make sure you follow my um, follow me um, head over to instagram follow me at jack kitchener 458 and then finally if you want a proven step-by-step -step, um, program for shopify that includes my full support uh, make sure you check out my ecom academy too again Again, there will be a link in the video description below. That being said then guys, thanks very much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.